please comment, like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Spicy, Spicy Tasty, Tasty Vegan Cuisine. Yeah. This is Dr. Joe. And this is Mama Nasira of Spicy, Spicy Tasty Vegan Cuisine. Yes. Hello, hi, welcome. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, this evening we were going to do a, a radio station on K-Pool with Keith Crawford. But it looks like the communication ah! was not that good. So what we wanted to do is just give you an overview of what we were going to talk about. First, I'd like to introduce this lovely lady to my left. Okay. This is Mama Nasira Ajila, or Mama Nasira. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a library technician, a banker. <laughs> she's the author of two of the best-selling books on health and nutrition. Uh, a laboratory technician, a phlebotomist, and a mother of three genius young men. Well, thank you, lovely. Uh, yes, I'm Mama Nasira, and yes, I'd like to introduce my husband, too, who's been a very wonderful inspiration in my life. Um, he has been a man who has worn so many hats, and one is, he told me he was a public speaker because sports was not his cup of tea because he was lightweight. <laughs> so he couldn't do that one. Not so, long. <laughs> and especially he had an injury, so that immediately made him change his mind. But, um, uh, but as a public speaker, as we all know throughout the world, uh, Dr. Joe speaks very well, and and he's really inspired me in that way. He's also um, a graduate from San Jose State University. Um, one of the areas where my family lived, which was great, studied social science, uh, psychology. Um, he also uh, received the teaching credentials, which I thought was very impressive. Um, he also um, attended and graduated of uh, Hastings Law School, which is very impressive. Um, he, he does music which the law ended up being part of his career, which he used it for. Um, he's also retired 30 years as a educator and teacher. Uh, a musician, I met him in the uh, time, I guess when he was in the midst of his career as a musician. Um, I traveled around to some of the churches and community functions and school um, events and just really had a great time with the music. So um, he's done that, he's done many things. Uh, most importantly, uh, what inspired me as um, being in his life is the fact that he's a plant-based vegan. And so he caught my attention because I was a vegan of at that time about, what, three or four years and was still learning. Mm -hmm. So we got a chance to share that experience. Um, and also he kept me away from meat and fish because there were times that I thought, oh, I'm getting weaker. I think I may need to eat meat. And he said, oh, you don't need that. So we would just find more and more different creative ways to help um, us maintain this vegan diet. So I just want to thank him for being in my life and making me a special woman. Mm. I too thank Mama Nasura for the many wonderful things that she's done. Uh, there was a question like, where are you guys and why are you guys there? What are you doing? Well, presently we are in the Gambia, West Africa. And we've been here a little over three and a half years. And we've been here spreading the word about health and nutrition. Mama has been responsible for training vegan chefs. She's given out over 20 certifications, uh, different time lengths, uh, whether it's six months, a year, or three weeks. Uh, six weeks. Six weeks. So uh -huh. she's been giving out certificates on vegan cooking. And one of the things we figured to do is, uh, if you're going to have change, which is revolution, it can come in many ways. And in this case, it's with health and nutrition. Because when you eat better, you think better. When you learn how to put together different combinations, use your local food that's grown, then not only are you going to think better, 
but it's going to positively impact those in your family, your community, your nation, and ultimately the world. And also, you have to see that I'm sweating a lot. It's probably about 90 degrees here in the Gambia. <laughs> We're in the rain, I mean, yeah, rainy season. And so with the rain, tropical, uh, I love the, the heat. It's just sometimes um, it gets to be really interesting with the sweating, so bear with me. <laughs> exactly. Um, but anyway, um, we have been doing so many wonderful things here in the Gambia. As my husband um, mentioned, yes, I've been doing a lot of training because um, I feel that it's important to maintain this, this lifestyle as a vegan is to start training young people. You know, as our grandparents used to teach us how to prepare food, um, because when we grow older, you know, sometimes we may not be able to really prepare meals. But if we start teaching young people how to prepare uh, healthy meals, we can continue to live longer. We can be a lot more supportive for the next generations. Because here in Africa, I'm learning that we must change our way of eating. It's a lifestyle and it's going to take time. The young people are really enjoying it and they're staying quite healthy. Okay, now that brings us to the point uh, number one we were going to talk about and that's Mama Nasir's concoction. Um, about two months before the uh, corona event, <laughs> uh, Mama Nasir and I had sent out information to uh, the medical doctors, the traditional healers, and the herbalists of the West African Conference. And uh, out of that conference, they decided to support any African country that had people in their country that came up with something that would support the health and welfare of the people. So we submitted uh, Mama Nasira's, we call it a concoction, which is a combination of three of the things in her book, and she'll explain that later. But we got this information out, and then, wow, the corona event. And as we heard, there was a lot of information, a lot of things going on, talking about this, that, a lot of fear, a lot of confusion. But the bottom line is, if you strengthen your immune system, then you'll be better able to fight off anything that comes to you. So when we came up with the concoction, uh, basically, we let everyone know as we put it out to the world. Strengthening your immune system, you don't have to worry about viruses, bacteria, and it is the best way to go. Mama, your concoction. Well, my concoction is actually um, one of those um, mom type of ingredients that you have right there in your kitchen. You know, your lemons and your lime, um, your oranges and grapefruits. Uh, we add, um, you know, tea, um, the um, dandelion tea, you know, for detoxing. Uh, we may add in more um, of the cinnamon. Um, we add ginger. I mean, it's just so many things that we can add. Um, I ended up doing it for myself two years ago because here in the uh, Gambia, life is quite different um, than um, in the States. Um, in San Francisco, where I was born and raised, um, we didn't really, um, well, times were different. We didn't have as many challenges with our health, but here in Africa, growing older, I saw that it was different where mosquitoes were, you know, were there, and they would actually um, bring out that inflammation that's probably been in the body for a long time. So I ended up getting really ill, stress, and training people, and trying to learn how to maneuver in the environment, and some shocks, and you know, power situation. It's just you know, when you're over 65, you know, going through these changes, sometimes is it can be overwhelming. So when I started to cough a lot, I just started boiling all of these different um, herbs and. In Citrix, I just it, I have the recipe in my book, Spicy Tasty Vegan Cuisine, um, and I combine them all. And being here in the Gambia, they have wonderful um, ingredients and nutrients and herbs such as their teas and boron boron, mm -hmm. um, kinkelaba, uh, we, they have excellent mint, 
Um, they have the um, baoba, which is just plentiful here. The moringa, um, the wonjo, which is the hibiscus. Um, it's, it just, it's, I put it all together and I just boil them. And when I boil them, I let it cool. And you know, I, after I cool it, you drink it. And before you know it, um, you, the coughing started to decrease. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the next thing I know, I started sharing it with all of the Gambian neighbors and, and it's just been going on and now we really need it because of what's going on in our environment and the seasonal changes. Um, it's, it's really important for us not to keep this for ourselves and try to market it, you know, to do all of these things. We want to do this ourselves. And some people, they may be a little stubborn about doing it, but if you can't do it, maybe you can pay someone else to do it for you. Now, what we did is when we get this uh, concoction out, we found that there were many doctors that were claiming that they had the herbal cure to coronavirus, and uh, basically it was just a knockoff of what we sent to Mama Nasira. And one of the things we wanted to do was to make sure that everyone had access to it that could. Uh, we didn't find ourselves in a position that the president of Madagasta had, where he had uh, something similar, and he was uh, offered some money, so, they, so he said, $20 million to put some stuff in there that was not going to help his people. We didn't want to be in that situation. And actually, with the urging of uh, our attorney, he suggested that we send this to the United States because, in his words, think of your family, your relatives, your friends in America. <laughs> well, you know, uh, so we were inspired. Uh, he drafted the letter. We sent it out to our representatives in Northern California. And from there, we were inspired even more and just start sending it out to everyone. And what we found that it reduces the mucus in your body. And if you reduce mucus, then you have no disease. And uh, there are many things that you can take to reduce mucus, to get it out of your blood, and practically all those things are in the, the uh, concoction. But uh, we'll give you a list of these things, but as Mama pointed out, you don't have to use everything. If you can just get anything from how much? Oh, at least 10 things. And what's really good is when you can get the ones like that are in season, Right now, the mango, I mean, I didn't mention that one, but we really add that one in the concoction. In fact, we did it today because we've been um, dealing with a little bit more stress here, where, you know, it seems like people calling us with, you know, challenges from home and, you know, we're having our own challenges. And I think yesterday my husband did one sniffle. I said, oh my goodness, here's the concoction right here. This is the end of it. So I just decided today is to have my chefs um, to put another one together so that we can have it. Because we also had a lady, two ladies that came by Saturday and they said they needed something to uh, boost their immune system. So one of the ladies, when she came in, I had prepared some food for them, but she was so exhausted, she just laid on the sofa for four hours and she just felt so good there. <laughs> we were putting the food together. She got up, she didn't want any food. We just packed her food. I sent her home with a drink and the next day I got a call, she's doing well. And it's just right now, we have to care for each other and, and make sure, make really sure that you just do what you think you do best at home. We don't have to go to the doctors unless, like my husband, he did have to go to the doctor after we worked with him for three weeks, you know, with dealing with some um, issues with urinary tract, you know, infections, and I think prostates and kidneys. And I'm telling him, you're getting close to 70 years old and you did very well this life. Yeah. And be patient with yourself. That was the second <laughs> thing we were going to talk about. And it's going to be part of our upcoming book. And that chapter is going to be, A Man Needs a Bath. And it's just like everything. If you ask, you shall receive. And I was looking for something that could bring out some information to our men. And sure enough, I had to experience it. I uh, found that I was having a little irritation when I was urinating. 
and there was some dripping that was sort of brownish and I wasn't quite sure what it was and I pointed out to my wife who came and looked she said oh that's like a woman's period oh, I said oh my god I went from an alpha male to being a man with a period so she started uh, working doing her research because she is a library technician and what did she do baby? And actually, I asked him the first thing. It, it sort of shocked me, you know, to see that. And I thought, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? I said, do you want to see a doctor? Go to a clinic? And he said, no. I said, okay, well, let's sit down and look at Google. So we got on the, the, um, the Google. And, and I, you know, I asked Google, um, what do you do about urinary tract or, um, you know, uh, kidneys problems? But anyway, I got a host of information about it could be possibly prostate cancer. And I said, oh my God, urinary tract or um, kidneys conditions. And so I said, okay, the first thing we could do is to get the citrus drink going. And then also in the morning, since we do kundalini yoga before we exercise, we drink plenty of water. We have the water available in a large jar where we add our um, ingredients, um, our superfoods like the baobab powder, the moringa powder, um, sea moss, um, bladder wag, um, moringa, MSM, uh, turmeric, and I'll stop there with um, a little bit of black pepper. And then I add lime and warm water. So I would make sure he would drink that. His, his appetite started to diminish over, you know, seven or eight days. And then I was just really working with him, and I was kind of not trying to worry, but um, I was a bit concerned. Um, so um, he started, I noticed he had a fever. I mean, it was really interesting that, you know, I, I just felt like I had to take care of him. I, had, I thought if I could help everyone else, I know I can help my husband. <laughs> so I was walking around in this big six-bedroom house, you know, thinking, oh, my God, what would life be without my husband? So I started... Um, Back on the Google, I said, what do I do for this high fever? Then I think it was lime and water and, and just getting him to sweat. And so he was sweating out, you know, sheets and towels. And, and I mean, two, uh, two weeks gone along and, you know, we still worked. There were days that he was up and okay. And I thought it was, I thought it was finished. And by the time he got to the third week, it was Wednesday, we had a guest that came over and he was fine. He talked and laughed and all of a sudden he went back to the bed and lying down. And so Thursday evening, I said, you know, you're going to have to go to the clinic and, and have your vital sh um, uh, checked. And he said, no. And I said, you want to do it Friday, tomorrow, or do you want to do it next week, Monday? And he said, next week. So I walked away and then I came back to him. And he said, you know, I'll go tomorrow. Yes. Uh, and so I tried to just it. sweat it out uh, to get it out. Because like some people, uh, and Dr. Sabi was one to say, hey, if you ain't feeling, feeling it, just stop eating. And mm -hmm. your body will usually recalibrate and take care of things. But what I found is that it was time for me to detox. The kundalini yoga helped because you're dealing with your pelvic floor. Also... Uh, the food that we eat and what I found is that as a man you know you you have to sort of pay the check in other words uh, with all of your relationships that you've had even masturbating all of that energy it builds up over time and then when you start to release and detox then you're going to be able to do it several different ways in my case I was able to sweat out and I had the best nurse in the world <laughs> and uh, then I found out at the end I, I had so much that I needed to just get rid of the bacteria and that is when I uh, took antibiotics and that was like for maybe the first time in my life because this is the first time I've ever been down uh, working out like this but after that cleaned out the good and back, bad stuff, we call it bacteria then I was able to rebuild my body again. So now I'm faster, stronger, and unlimited, and I give thanks to my wonderful wife. And as most people uh, tell us, because I got six, three years ago, uh, two years ago, and I remember losing like anywhere from 10 to 13 pounds. And that can be a lot if you're already small. But 
it was okay because what I've learned in uh, reducing the weight, as we become older, we don't need a lot of inflammation in our body. And that's why this, um, this, this um, citric drink, you know, especially also with the uh, pineapple too, this is what reduces the inflammation from your, um, your cells, you know, from your tissues, you know, out of your joints and bones. And, you know, a lot of people think, you know, when you have weight, you know, you're really um, at this healthiest point. But when you 20 and, you know, maybe 30s, yes, you probably are because you're burning the energy. But when you get older, it starts to look different. And also when you are, to me, if I had 20 pounds more, sure, my face would be more cheap. I have more cheek space, probably wouldn't see any lines. But then if I get sick, you know, later on, then the, the wrinkles, you know, will come, come in because you're sick, sick and it, 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 it doesn't, doesn't look, look as, you don't you look, look as healthy. healthy. And, and then, then you really, really have, have to work, work on, on it. it. So, so um, I'm, I'm grateful, grateful that I understand, I understand you, know, you know, that you don't, you don't have, have to when you're you heading towards 70s and 80s. 80s. We, don't we don't need a lot of weight. weight. You know, in fact, uh, if you just do just your light exercises, walking, you know, a little bit of barbell weights or, you know, your yoga, your tai chi. When we're doing those things, you know, it's going to keep your body uh, toned and, and, and you're going to feel good and you're going to look good and you look better. So my husband, when he lost this weight, I mean, I thought, wow, he's small. I'm sure glad I understand this life. Because, because the main, main thing, thing, even though he's 10, 10 pounds less, less but he is still strong. Mm -hmm. And I give thanks for that. Yes, so and I want to recap. If, if you're, you're looking, looking at Mama Nasser's concoction, it's a combination of three things that are in the book. Uh, you had the citric drink. The citric drink is there. You had the herbal detox. Yes. And, and then uh, combine them all together. Yeah. And, and, and add any more organic ingredients. Now also if you want to clean out your lungs or at least have that aroma, aroma therapeutic effect. Uh, when it's boiling like it is just take a cloth or towel and put it over your head and breathe it in and that will go down into your lungs and your bronchial tubes and that heat itself will kill off viruses and bacteria. So that's one of the things you can do. The other thing is be vigilant. As Mama pointed out, uh, Mucus. Give your mucus, you give your disease. And there are very few centurions, that means people over 100, uh, that are overweight. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind also. And there are many things that you can take to help to cleanse your blood of it. Uh, we have things like oregano, or here we call it uh, oregano. And that uh, has 42 times more uh, antioxidants than an apple. Uh, you have your lime, which is good with potassium and phosphorus, and you have uh, manganese and a number of other things to help, and we can just go down the list. But these are some things we would like for you also. Do your research. Mom and I, yes, we're blessed. We have the number one book on health and nutrition for people of color. We also have the number one book for the general audience or people. And, and this is number one in the UK, this is number one in the world. And, and we ask you to please get the books because it has over 50 no soy, non-gluten recipes, but also it has things in there that talk about the fibroids, the uh, prostate, uh, the sugars, the uh, uh, pots or uh, cooking utensils. And transitioning, you know, we need to have some ideas from transitioning from Drinking the dairy, the, the milk, milk, to make almond milk, milk um, uh, uh, cashew milk. milk. You can even do hazel uh, nuts, and um, there's so many things that we can do to transition. You know, uh, from sugar. You know, we can go to uh, maple syrup or your local honey. This is a lot of things that we indicated in the book. You know, that can help you to um, make, make the change, change. and it, it, it takes time, you know, we, we also have, have a section in here on, um, what is it, in the kitchen, stop in the kitchen, kitchen. kitchen. you know, a lot of times we don't know exactly what things to buy, you know, the book has that information.
So and we also talk, talk about water. Uh, Mama and I, we are distributors of multi-pure. Uh, because part of the challenges that we have is that drinking water out of plastic bottles, hormonal disruptors, the same as fluoride and uh, things that you have that are sprayed on your food, you know. So a lot of these things have made a different change in we as a people, but by having information, we can make the strides in the proper way to make ourselves healthier and, of course, wiser. Because when you eat better, you're going to think better. Now, we're going to wrap this up because we don't want it to be too long, but we just wanted to point out those things that we were going to talk about on the station. So, we, once again, we appreciate all of you for all your support, and we also like it when you, know, you hit that button on the YouTube channel here, and you like it and subscribe it, and you follow us, and get notices, and when others are coming out. So, we want you to know we love you unconditionally because we know we are all one, and that's what we're all about helping everyone that we can. No? Yes, yes, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for your time. time. I hope that, that this can help you. you. And soon we'll have a, um, a uh, we're looking at a, a website that's set up where we can ask mom. Because I like to research. I've been doing it for over 30 years. And I would like to be able to research um, anything in terms of prostate condition, fibroid, tumor, um, challenges based on my experiences and taking the time to share it, you know, with women and men. Absolutely. And we'll be bringing you more. And once again, we appreciate your love and support. So we look forward to you guys getting more information from us. And hey, it just gets better and better. So thank you so very much. Thank you. And also we can uh, let you know that you can check out our, our YouTube channel, Spicy Tasty Vegan Cuisine, um, our Facebook, uh, Facebook.com, um, mm -hmm. what is this, Spicy Tasty Vegan, the books. Um, we also have um, the website, SpicyTastyVegan.com, and we also have an Instagram. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. And we're in the Gambia, West Africa. Africa. Peace and love. Spicy Tasty Vegan Cuisine. Yeah. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.